guys, it's Tam from Shine Bright Design and today we are going to talk about one of my requested, most requested videos lately and that is basically to display all my wooden box sets. So I will be displaying all my sets and as a disclaimer, I like to say, and I always say this beforehand, is that uh, this video hasn't been made to create, create any offence towards anyone. I'm not trying to make anyone jealous. Uh, my career is design based so I invest in really high quality stuff because I'm passionate about it and it's one of my uh, hobbies as well. So you don't have to buy off wooden box sets for everything but I love art so much, I love colouring so much and pencils that I am a avid collector in colouring pencil sets in a wooden box. So these are the wooden boxes that I have chosen and done my research on. I'll be talking about the pros and cons for each set that I have. Unfortunately, I won't be talking about the Prismacolor um, Premiere set because I do not have that set in a wooden box. They don't have anything like that available at the moment. They did in the past, but currently in store, you cannot purchase a wooden box set. But if in the future, I'll definitely do a review or pros and cons on that as well. So as well as doing pros and cons for these uh, products, I will also be chit-chatting about them. Little things that I like and don't like. Uh, little things about the product that some of you may not know or things that I notice about the product. Um, and any questions or corrections or clarifications needed, you can comment below and ask me. I respond fairly quickly. Um, and as well as that, all my Patreon followers, whether you're Light Pro or Plus, will be receiving color charts, blank color charts for every set that I am showcasing today. And that includes the Prismacolor Premiere set as well. I actually am going to give away, um, will release a Prism Color Premiere uh, coloring chart or color chart to all viewers. So that'll be accessible to public as well as my Patreon followers as well. So the color charts that you'll be receive, you will see or be able to obtain if you're a Patreon, for example, is something like this. Um, I just at the moment laminate these on A4 sheets, and I have them on A4 sheets because majority of my charts come in uh, A4 size. I am considering doing an A5 um, perfectly bounded book. Um, but if that is something that you guys are interested, I will look to do a tutorial on how to perfectly bind a uh, color chart in the future. And that is a combination of, I guess, my graphic design, uh, skills that I can showcase to you and create something that you can easily do at home and bind together. So that is something that I'm thinking of doing. I'm not sure if it's something that people are interested in, but you know, people who do coloring charts are people who have a lot of pencils. And the benefits of having coloring charts is a lot of people don't like doing it because it takes a lot of time and I can agree it takes a lot of time. It's taken me months just to finish this because I would just rather do a tutorial instead of create these charts. But um, the benefits of having these charts is that you have the pencil colour on paper. And a lot of you guys have requested me to do a, um, it's, it's a conversion chart between pencil brands. and. As I would like to do a conversion chart, it does take a lot of time. But the benefit is, if you have coloring charts for every brand you have, you can do your own conversions by just comparing brands and colors uh, with one another. So if you don't want to do a conversion chart, just do a coloring chart uh, for each brand you have. And if you are trying to convert colors or whatnot, you can do that. Um, I guess conversion charts are for people who don't have the brands, like you have Prismacolor Premieres, but you don't have the Karen Dashes and you want to convert the colors. Um, sure, you can do that, but also keep in mind that every brand has specialized colors that may not convert over to other brands. Um, for example, certain neon colors may not be in other brands, 
or certain blues, uh, li uh, kind of limited edition, or they are just a certain color that you can find in that set alone. For example, let's talk about the Holbein Skin Tones. The Holbein Skin Tones cannot be found in the Prismacolor Premier set. Each brand has its own unique color palette. So conversions may not be appropriate, but I do recommend everyone to do color charts for each pencil set that you own as well. It's just very convenient to see the color on paper. And for me, I work mainly with toned paper, so I like to see what my whites look on top of grey, for example. Just see how opaque it looks or how pigmented it is. And it really is useful in that sense. So, anyways, let's keep going on with this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I do notice I kind of waffle on. It is a really long video, and I hope you guys can take something from it. Um, and the real benefit of it is to help you make an informed decision by viewing the wooden box sets close up and me discussing the details of every set. And I'm just trying to help those who want to get a wooden box set uh, in the future and don't know what box set you want and would love to see close up in detail the pros and cons of each set and the close-up details of each set. They're all very beautiful. It's honestly uh, each to their own. Uh, when talking about each brand, I'm comparing them against one another, but each brand in itself is really good. For example, I there are flaws in Prismacolor Premier, but Prismacolor Premier is a really good pencil set. Um, it is good. I do enjoy it. But in comparison to what I exist, I have existing, there there is things that are lacking if I had to compare against other brands. And that's what this video is about, comparing boxes and brands against each other. So again, I'm not going to be discussing the Prismacolor Premier set because there is no wooden box set available. If there is, I will purchase it. Don't you worry. I love the Prismacolor Premieres and I would love them in a box. Um, but, you know, there's always better in this world and I'm always looking for the next best pencil set. So if you have any recommendations or um, any brands that you like, comment below, tell me. I'd love to look, about, look it up and do some research on it. Uh, but I love hearing from you guys and I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. All right, the next set we're looking at isn't a pencil set. It is a pastel set. Now, I have started getting into pastels lately, and this may not be a set that you would particularly be interested in, but I think this is one of the bougie type of fancy sets of pastel pencils. This set costs around 550 Australian dollars. The Prismacolors, when I bought them, were 150 Australian dollars. So you're getting what you pay for. So this is 550 Australian dollars. This one was purchased through Officeworks. So yeah, this one also is quite fragile as well. Uh, so if you dropped it, you're gonna break it. Um, I have dropped this one, which is why it's so short, because when you drop it, things crack. And because it's not wax based, I don't think, you can't just leave it in the sun and it will just melt back. So pastels are a risk. You want to buy it in, sh in the shop and you want to inspect it as well. Um, these are definitely high quality pigmented pencils. Um, I don't use these often and I don't use it as my main pencil. Generally when I'm working with pastels, I'll work with a wax or oil based pencil on top depending on the brand and if they if they are they can complement each other. Some brands don't work. For example, I have not tried a Prismacolor on top of a pan pastel, but I have tried these pastels on top of a pan pastel and they work well. I've tried the luminances on top of my pan pastels and they work well as well. Um, but I like using pencils in combination with other mediums like watercolour, texture, whatever. But in terms of 
the quality of this. This is a beautiful pencil. It is a thicker uh, hexagonal shape. The Prismacolors were round. So, it, so the thing about this, it is a hexagonal shape. It's not round and it is a bit bigger. So you can't use this on a Tagal sharpener or a round sharpener. You have to use it on one of your larger sharpeners. So the one that I recommend for these type of pencils that could be quite large is the Derwent Super Point Manual Sharpener. Now that sharpener actually, it retracts and then it grips on to the pencil as it, as you let it go. So it will never squish or crimp or squeeze the wood, right? Else with some other sharpeners, it it squishes the wood and it dints it and all that jazz and it ruins the pretty little barrel. You know, you want to look after these pencils. You've taken a lot of time and in saving into buying these pencils, so you want sharpeners um, to be very gentle with them. So with this pastel pencil. It is quite large, so it's not going to fit in your standard sharpener like a Tagal. The Tagal may may scratch this because the Tagal is appropriate for round sharp uh, round pencils, and this is more of a round chunky hexagon. As you can tell from the barrel, it's hexagon but not sort of roundish, um, and that's because it is a pastel, and the pastelette is humongous, as you can tell from this. Can you tell? Focus. Focus for me. Oh my god, you're not focusing. Anyway, so it is quite a large barrel. This barrel is probably, I would say, 8 mils. Yeah, definitely, definitely 8 to 9, 8 to 7 mils. It is quite large. And, um, that is why the barrel, the wooden barrel, is quite large. This is, it has branding and writing in white paint and it is dipped in the color of the pastel pencil. So it's very nice, it has a very natural wood feel with the color. Uh, I think it's beautiful and it really gives it a raw pastel -y feel. I love the casing of this for what it's worth. It's foam. I just want to take the camera off. This is and show you a 84 up. set. Yes. An 84 set, which means that with three trays, there's plenty of room. So what they've been able to achieve is having foam inserts. Now, Caran Dash is the only brand at the moment who's doing such high quality um, pencil trays. Normally people just do wood, but these guys have foam inserts and I adore it. I just think it just gives it better packaging. Pastel pencils are very fragile in itself, so it's great to see that you're paying for a bit of uh, safety and security of your product, and I think it's lovely. Everything about Caran Dash is really high quality. They have foam packaging in between each layer, foam trays, really high quality wooden box. Uh, these wooden box trays stack on top of each other and these are actual proper brass locks and beautiful gold branding on top of wood. It's quite lovely, uh, and it's definitely, you're getting what you pay for, and I love it. The thing about this set, well, I wouldn't say this set, but I would like Caran Dash to kind of... So, what I was talking about, that Pro, what I love about this is, I think the shape is really cute. Not practical when it comes to display because it is quite deep whereas most sets are um, not as deep. It is very square so it's thus very hard to store because it's so wide and square but it's a really nice shape um, still and it's really nice in the way they've done it. Um, my criticism is it is too 
deep. If it was shorter and longer, like the Faber Castells, it would be more practical in terms of storage. But what I love about this is their elevation, their elevation tiered system. I think this tiered system is kind of flawed because I think you're wasting a lot of space in this back area. Sure, you could store things, but really, are you going to store things back there? You know, I just feel like they should have looked at the Faber-Castell wooden box set in comparison to this back storage area. Um, by doing it the way they have, it's made it a lot deeper, and I believe the design could have been different. But, you know what, the Pablo set is the only one that has this angled elevation. The Fabi Castell has it like this. So I guess in terms they don't want to copy each other but because Karen Dash has gone like this it has made it deeper and I guess more impractical in terms of storage. Let's talk about the trays. The trays here they're wood but the inserts are plastic so again not like the foam inserts because there's more pencils here. There's 120 here, so they obviously don't have the room. Now, the embossing is gold and is a hexagonal shape. A tagal will not be good for this set. A tagal will damage this set, so I recommend using a a super point. A super point sharpener by Derwent um, because the cigars, you know, they're going to damage the hexagonal barrel. Uh, this has trays, so it has two trays, only one can lift out, one that sits in there, and one's elevated. So, in terms of practicality, it's smaller, it's deeper, I mean, like small in width, it's deeper. So it takes maybe one side of your pencil. Whereas the Faber-Castell is longer and not as deep and it holds pencils like this. And I guess, I'll probably talk about it more when I go with the Faber-Castell set. Um, but this, in a sense, takes up at least a third of this table. Okay, whereas the luminances and the pen pastels they're quite small, so they're more... A pro in that sense is, because they're smaller, they don't take as much room, or you take the tray as you need it. Um, with this one, you open it, it takes a lot of space, but you know what? It's definitely up to the user and how you work and how you use your pencils. Um, if you're someone who needs to have everything everywhere, then this is a good set for you. If you're someone who works in a very small limited space, one of those stack-in trays, work, um, cardboard boxes, whatever boxes work for you. Wooden boxes do take a lot of space, but they're, they're grand as hell. So, yeah, the backing of this is a bit different, and I'm assuming it's because we have that elevated tier um, system in there. It is a very very cute um, box. Now, could I show you the sizing of this? I definitely could because I keep saying it's so big. This is 34 and a half centimeters by 75. 75. Sorry, 37. So 34 by 37. Quite large. Um, I have all these details in the description box and the, so you can compare them but this is a more squarish box. It's not a bigger rectangular box like the Faber-Castell and it's definitely bigger than the luminance and the pastel pencils. Um, but yeah, the Pablos are really nice. Let's talk about the colour range. Now the Prismacolor colour range is really good. I think the color palette of Prismacolor is 
is overall really, really good. It colors all your areas, florals, skin tones of all sorts, and it has the right amounts of yellows. What I find lacking in the Pablo, I'm not sure if I've ever said this in the past, but I find the color palette in this set to be lacking in terms of skin tones. So when I try to use this for for portraits, it doesn't work for me. Uh, it just doesn't have enough colors for me or it hasn't got enough neutral tones. Definitely the colors are bright and beautiful. So if you're not a portrait person, this set may work for you. If you're a portrait person, the luminances will work for you. But you know what? When you combine the Pablos and the luminances as a combination, they work really well. The Pablos are a bit harder than the than the luminances, and that's because I think they have more oil in them rather than wax. So the the lumen, like these are all hybrid pencils, like they're a mixture of wax and oil. So you, wax is the harder, oh sorry, wax is a softer element of pencils and oil is the harder version of it. So you'll find that Prismacolors are wax based, Faber Castells are oil based. And you'll find everything that I talk about now, all these other brands, are a hybrid between the two. And you can kind of, it just depends on each brand's formula of wax and oil ratio, which makes them hard or soft. And that's why I always tell you guys, buy a couple, test it out. Um, test out if you like the hardness or softness of the brand. So not every pencil is the same, even if it is from the same brand. Caran Dash, same brand, uh, same quality, but obviously, the, the hardness of the lead does differ. Luminances are softer than this. I can guarantee you that 100%. Luminances have more skin tone, but this has a more vibrant color palette. Um, less neutrals, but definitely really appropriate for florals and oceans and anything like that. But Pablo is probably not appropriate for a skin tone. It's just a limited palette when it comes to the neutrals in this set. But all in all, it is a nice quality set. Um, for me, it is probably one of my least used. I like to use this in combination with luminances uh, and pan pastels. So I'll do that. But on its own, I just can't work with it because I mainly do portraits as you guys know, or illustrations with figures in them. So I do like a good skin tone set, and this just doesn't have it. So if you love portraits, getting this on its own is not going to help you do skin at all. It's going to make sure you make it a lot tougher because you're going to have to mix, and that is hard. So you really want a skin tone palette if you're into portraits. If you're not, Pablo is still beautiful, uh, high quality. Uh, Swiss made, beautiful craftsmanship, you can't go wrong. Uh, it is expensive though, it is really expensive. This set in Australian cost me, I think around 400 and something, 400 and something. Um, as you guys know, again, I spend this money because I'm a collector, this is my career, this is my passion, I invest into my career and passion, which is why I spend so much. Um, if you were a tennis player, you would invest into your tennis career, your tennis sport, your equipment, same as me. So, please don't hate, please be nice. <laughs> um, but yes, the Pablos and the Caran Dashes in general are very expensive. And it's because they're Swiss made, same type of high quality as the Faber Castell. Germany. Germany. Um, um, so you're so paying for you're that, paying for quality, that level. quality level. Um, and um, the reason and why, the reason why, why it is so affordable, is, so affordable is because of the, the quality level and, and the manufacturing, the manufacturing quality, quality as well. So you're getting what you're paying for, you know. 
This is like the, this is like the the Louboutin, the Louboutin. Oh, oh, oh. Kind of like really, oh, like really, really, like really, really gray, not really gray levels. levels. But this is kind of like this is kind of like the higher range, higher range of the pencil oh, brand. The pencil brand. Actually, all the brains. Actually, all the brains that have of the of the a kind of high, a kind of high range, in the but pencil range. But in comparison to prison, to prison this, color, this sits way above. Sits way above. So so yeah. Yeah. In quality sense, in quality yes. sense, color yes. palette, color no. palette, this no. color palette, this is color like palette, skin tones, skin tones. But if you are going to get, this if you are going to get, definitely set, get luminous, definitely set get luminous because, set because you will see, soon. you will see soon. Okay, so as I said before, previously, Karen Dash has a really similar branding style across all their other sets. This one was a bit more expensive, even though it has less pencils. This one was around. 550 Australian dollars. Um, I will confirm this all in the description box below. And remember, with the dollar changing, the price will vary as well. So I recommend, if you're going to get any of these expensive ranges, get it when the dollar is good. And that's all I can say to you. Like most of the time when I'm buying this, it's when the dollar is really good. So with the Karen dashes, <clears throat> you can get these online. I don't, I do not, like, I do, I don't think you can really have these damaged in transit at all. Do you know why? Because the packaging is perfectly amazing. I had these shipped to me from Victoria and I love them and they came in such perfect condition. Now, this is what I mean when I say, if you have the Pablos, these set is great in combination because it has really great tans and skin, like skin tones. It's got a really nice neutral tone. It's not much, but there's definitely enough to make it work. This is a 76 set and it has two blenders and two graphite pencils. This is a thicker barrel, very similar to the width of the pastel pencils and it is round. Round pencils like this you would use on a Tagal because it's round it's not going to damage the hexagonal shape. This is very similar to a pen pencil as well. It has the um, raw wood look and it has embossing in silver but it is a nice quality embossing. You don't see any parts of the wood around it I guess developing its own little box because it was embossed too hard. It's just perfect craftsmanship, perfect amount of weight. There is no damage to the embossing. It's quite it has like no imperfections in reality and that's kind of the reflection of the brand that you're buying into. The colour is dipped at the very end so it does differ with the Pablos which is complete colour. This is just dipped and these pencils don't crack. These pencils are a mixture of the wax and the oil but these ones, the luminances, are a lot softer than the Pablos. This one has less range in colours, but you're paying for almost the same price between the 76 pencils and luminances and the 120 Pablos. And the reason is, I believe, it's because the quality. Uh, these are softer and a lot of people tend to use the luminance pencils over the Pablos more. I'm not sure why, but people favour this set a lot. I favour this set a lot over the Pablo. And it may be just the overall palette and the quality, but it is one of the nicest sets of Karen Dash. So again, it's got a very similar uh, system to the way the pastel pencils are done. Foam inserts, pull-out trays, three pull-out trays that stack on each other, gold branding in like a semi-gloss. The wood itself is semi-gloss, brass handles or metal handles which is nice and it's a dark wood. It is a smaller box so it is 
it is 85 centimeters by 20 centimeters deep, which is quite small. And it doesn't take that much space, and because it's a tray, you can just take the trays as you need them. So this one doesn't take that much room. So I do like this. Quality is amazing. Everything, I think, is amazing. Um, are there any cons? I wish there were more colours. Um, not really a con, but it's kind of like a, I wish, if I had to say anything. Um, do I want the tiered setting? Look, I think the tiered setting, like how you have it in the Pablo, is really nice. But these trays that stack on each other are really pretty. And you know what? There are definitely some ways that they could make this still functional and small, but somehow, I don't know, somehow tear it so it looks really like fancy or practical. I'm not quite sure, but I, I think on the display point of view, just having it like this without showing all the colors doesn't like doesn't like the pencil shine to its abilities it's a beautiful product but the packaging is nice but the packaging sort of lets it down in a way that doesn't allow it to shine it's just a collector's box in a sense but it's not a box designed in a way to be showcased like the Pablo so the luminance and the pastel pencil isn't designed in a way that it's going to be showcased it's more of a artist box, a collector wooden box, um, but it's definitely not a display case. So yeah, product is beautiful, definitely not a display case, but it is artist quality wooden box, so it's definitely got a collector's feel to it. Um, is it something that you would still display on a glass shelf, for example? Yes, but could I tell from a distance what it is? Maybe not. But, and of course the way that it's designed with a flat lay kind of lets it down, but when you use the product, it's, the product itself and the quality for the product just speaks for, just speaks for the brand, you know. You don't need a fancy big packaging to show you how great it is. A lot of people just collect these boxes because they love the brands and they love the product itself, like me. So I'm not really fussed that it comes. It's not tiered and it's not something that I can display on a coffee table. Um, but it's definitely still collectible. I still can appreciate it and I love the wood, you know. I'm a very tactile person so this is still something that I really love. So, yeah. Not really a travel case like the Faber-Castell. Um, but definitely these, these little lock things. A really high quality um, in comparison to other brands which I'll show you next. Um, this is really secure in how it just clips in. Um, it's very strong. It's a reflection of what you're paying. You're paying for what you get for, definitely guys. Um, paying for what you get for. But it's really nice, really lovely. So that's the Karen Dashes. Let's move on. These are the Faber-Castell Artist Box Sets. One is the watercolour set. And the other is the Polychromas. I'm not attempting to pronounce the name of the watercolour set because I always get it wrong. But you just need to know that it is the watercolour pencil set and the other is the uh, oil-based pencil set. So we'll talk about these two. I'm going to show them at the same time because they're very similar. The only difference is one is watercolour based, the other is a oil-based pencil. So anyway, let's get going. So we are going to talk about both of these sets at the same time and we're doing a front on film shot just because how large these pencils take up space. So I'll probably show you everything close up as well but I just want to discuss everything as a whole. So one of the great marketing points of these sets, if I can just pan and show you, 
is a couple things. The polychromous set is round and the watercolor set is hexagonal. So as I've said before, if you're going to get one really good pencil sharpener for both a hexagonal pencil and a round pencil, I recommend the Derwent Superpoint Sharpener because you can control the, I guess, the diameter of the pencil and how much it grabs on. The thing about Tagal is it has a certain width and it may crush or damage the hexagonal barrel. I've had some hexagonal barrels that a Tagal has damaged the barrel just because it kind of crunches that wood a bit too hard. So in a sense, with my hexagonals, I always use my Derwents. With my rounds, I use my Tagal. And I use the Tagal because you can adjust the, the height of the lead that you're working with. So there are different levels. Um, if you're not familiar with a, a Tagal sharpener, I'll do a separate video on sharpeners. Uh, but I generally like to use a Tagal because I'm saving as much pigment of the pencil as I can. And I really don't like sharpening those dollars away. So, I've had this set for, I think two years now and I've had this set for a bit over a year now. I got this in July 2017 and I think I got this in January 2017. January? Yeah, so oh, actually maybe around 2016. Anyway, you can tell I've used these pencils a lot more than the Faber-Castell. And that's just because I work a lot with oil and wax based pencils over the water based uh, watercolour pencils. But as you can see, the colours are exactly the same. It's just personal preference. The craftsmanship is exactly the same. They have the silver, um, the silver branding on the lid, inside and outside, same wood. The handles are a con for me. They're made out of plastic. This set is extremely expensive. It's one of the most expensive sets you can get. This is almost up there with the Karen Dashes and the Holbeins. So it's it's pricey, but it's definitely nice because this set stands out because its length and its depth isn't that deep as well. The reason why Faber-Castell also stands out for their their packaging is basically the tiered the tiered levels. And that's what's really cool about Faber-Castell. You will see in a lot of their limited edition stuff that they have that mechanism where they use these hinges on the side to um to level or angle their pencils as a great display display method and Faber-Castell is the only one that has two actually no yeah they're the only one that has a tier that is horizontally straight and so long everyone else has it angled and shorter so each brand stands out for their different qualities I like the length I think the length is really nice it, did I just list? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Ah, oh, it's been a long day, guys. Okay, um, a lot of speaking and I am losing my mind. Anyway, so, what I like about this set is it's the longest, it's one of the longest sets that you can get on the market at the moment. And it has those metal hinges, which I really like on the side. I really love that extra storage underneath as well with the pencil grooves. I think it's really nice. In comparison to the Pablo, um, the Pablos are a bit, their, their additional storage is a bit too deep and it has no pencil trays in it. So I for one would like a bit of pencil tray so people can add additional colours. What I like about this is, 
say later on Faber Castell as limited edition colours. You can actually store it in the set. I don't know if they'll ever add limited edition colours, but who knows? I feel like they really should every 10 years or so, like one unique colour that some designer um, collaborates with them, you know, like a, I don't know, a special type of black or a special, a special type of red by Louboutin. And it's like a special Louboutin red that we all love that collaborates with Faber Castell. I'm only saying this example because they just collaborated with Carl Lagatha for that new limited edition um, set, which is absolutely amazing. I have to say, I think I've said this already, but it is amazing. Bloody expensive. Bloody amazing, though. Um, but yes, one of the longer sets. Branding, packaging, great craftsmanship. Um, only downfall is these plastic, plastic locks. I absolutely hate them. I think if they went with metal finishes, like how they did with the hinges, or even the same as the handle on the back here. I'm going to show you. This is... Is it plastic or... Anyway, it's not... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's somewhat metal. Um, maybe a combination of metal and plastic. I'm not quite sure. It feels quite sturdy and um, durable. But the thing about these handles is that it's not... It doesn't have that durable feeling. It has a really, really cheap feeling for some odd reason. And I don't know why they went with this plastic finish. I just feel like it kind of cheapens the feel a little. And I feel like they... I can understand why they did it. They did it because it has a handle and it's supposed to be held upright. So they have a locking mechanism so that it doesn't fall out, which I get. But I wish that they could have done this locking mechanism some way with a metal finish. I don't know how, but it just it just makes it feel cheaper using plastic. And for the price you pay, you would hope that they would use quality material. I'm not saying plastic isn't quality, but it just really kind of brings it down a bit. It doesn't make it feel luxurious as you'd like it to be so let me just center everything so these set they're designed in a way that they're supposed to be transported a lot of the other sets that I've shown you aren't designed in a way that they're supposed to be transported a lot of them don't have handles um, I for one would not carry any of these sets around in the wooden box set, I'm just too precious. I would rather carry it in a canvas sleeve or um, a wrap uh, if I was to take my pencils travelling or, I don't know, if I was to do like a colouring meetup or whatever. I would take it in a wrap. I wouldn't take it in a box because it just it's just not it's smart when it comes to space saving. You can save so much space storing them in elevators here as, as normal and it still would have been amazing. You don't need the handles, you don't need these locks. If you had metal locks that just clicked in uh, or had some type of locking mechanism like the whole binds or the Karen dashes, it would have been perfect. Um, but these plastic things just don't do it for me. So those are the Faber Castells. Faber Castells pretty much up there with the Karen Dashes and the Holbeins. Faber Castell and the Karen Dashes are a lot easier to get. The Faber Castells will be more readily available across majority of art stores. Holbeins not. Karen Dash. Karen Dash has limited supplies as well. So you're not going to find Karen Dash in every art store. Uh, only selected suppliers in Australia or over the world will supply Karen Dash. And Karen Dash, Faber Castell, Prismacolor will sell these, um, will sell these single sold as well. The Holbeins, not so much because they're harder to get. But let's move on to the final box set and I'll show you why I left this for last. I did a video on my Holbein's not long ago. I got these for Christmas. 
but let's just talk about this in comparison to everything else. I left this for last because this is the the bougiest, the fanciest set you can get on the market at the moment. There are a few reasons why. They're hard to get. They're expensive. They're hard to import in. And the attention to detail with this set is amazing. To me, it's not too small, it's not too big, but it kind of fulfills every thing I want in a wooden box set. Let me tell you why. One, attention to detail. Gold locks. These locks have a push, a, like a slide, a slide out method, and it opens up like this. Inside there is wood detailing, so it kind of drops in top and bottom. This is kind of level with the the, the whole lid. It's got the Holbein's branding as well as at the top. Same colour gold matching these little locks here. The pencils sit in a plastic tray, but you have to consider it is a 150 wooden box set. 150, correct. The pencils are round completely in the colour that they are. They're embossed or foiled in gold with a number, branding and everything. They're pre-sharpened as they come and they have two drawers beneath. Now, the reason why I like this is because it has that tiered feeling, what you get with the Faber-Castells, but it also has this, the daintiness of the Caran d'Ache and it has those three level trays. It's not long as the Faber-Castell and it's not deep as the Poblos from the Caran d'Ache set. They don't stack on top, so having drawers and this lift up lid, you're able to see all your colours in front of you. For example, in comparison to the Caran d'Ache, you have to pull the trays out. With the Pablo, you still have to pull a tray out. And it is very deep. And also we're going to talk about the quality of the Pablo. wasn't, isn't... The quality is great, but the colors the colors aren't for me and most people. So the colors are harder to work for, work with. But the Holbein's colors are really easy to work with. Let me show you why. If you love skin, the pastels will fulfill your every need. If you are a floral, neutral, landscape person. The middle tray will fulfill your every need. And if you are a bright, vibrant pixie lover, I'm just, I don't know, saying, I'm just saying random stuff. These vibrant colours at the top will fulfill your every need. Looking at it again, not too deep, not too long, just right. The way that it's packaged, it is the glossiest box compared to everything else. And it is a dark wood. The attention to detail on the sticker is amazing and the back has some beautiful hinges. Now the bottom is also normal beautiful wood but these handles are very tiny and dainty. There is a really nice balance between every element of this piece. The Holbeins are Japanese and if you look at Japanese art, Japanese anything, you can tell that their whole aesthetics is very refined and balanced and you can really see that in the set. So it really reflects this whole way of how Japanese people do things. Simple, clean, refined, balanced. and. I really have to compliment Holbein on their colour palette. 
it's a really overall color palette. This color palette is great as the Prisma colors. Now I'm going to get my Prisma colors out and show you. Okay, so I've displayed this in a way that you can see the color comparisons. So if you look at the skin tones down here and up there, they're very similar in a way. And the blues also have a very similar tone. The browns not so much, it's more cooler. But the oranges and reds are plentiful in the Prismacolors in comparison. These colors very much, like even though I think the Prismacolors are a lesser quality than the Holbein's, the Prismacolors have a really great color palette in comparison. So I like Prismacolor because their color palette is overall good and I've learned to use Prismacolors by understanding their qualities and how it works and using that to the best of my abilities to achieve what I achieve in my videos. So this is, if you're going to start out, this is a great, a great set. If you're going to take it really seriously, this is a great set too. Anything in between, such as the Luminances, the Faber-Castells, the Pablos, it's kind of a, um, an in-between mark. If you can't afford the whole binds, any of the other sets are amazing as it is. If you like the luminances, I mean, if you like the Prismacolors and you can't afford the butteriness of the whole binds, the luminances are slightly cheaper, but they're just as buttery as the whole binds and they're high quality as well. The only thing is the luminances have less color. So there's only like 76. 76, 84 colors in comparison to the Prisma colors. So you're getting a more expensive set, but you're getting less colors with it. What else is there? The Faber Castells are harder than the Holbeins, but overall, the Faber Castells are the most high quality and easily available set. And they're, the colors in there are, are beautiful as well. Faber Castell doesn't normally have a pastel range like this. It's something they're quite lacking. But they do have skin tones in there that work. The skin tones in the Faber Castell set is more pinky and more tanned. Um, they're lacking the neutral tones such as these ashy tan colors, the cooler neutral colors. So what is great about Prismacolor is that Prismacolor has cool and warm neutral colors, whereas the Faber-Castell will have more of the warmer skin tanned colors and the pinkier um, skin colors. But the Faber-Castells are really reliable and you can definitely make their color palette work just by mixing. I've done a couple of Faber-Castell polychromous skin tutorials and you can definitely achieve some great skin tones. But when it comes to skin tones, these are my favorite. So are these. These are also my favorite when it comes to skin and the luminances. That's if you're really into portraits, you know. So it really depends on what your preference of artwork is. If you love portraits, you should consider the portrait the sets that have more skin appropriate color palettes and if you're you're neither a portrait person or not like you have no preference then the Faber Castells will do will be a really good start and because but the thing is when you work with a Faber Castell you really have to adjust with the hardness of the lead that's something I have to say um, a lot of people who start off with the Prismacolors and ace that and then move on to the polychromous, struggle to adjust to the hardness of the lead compared to the Prismacolor. A lot of people are either Prismacolor or polychromous, but honestly, in my years of coloring, they're really different products. One is wax, one is oil, one is soft, one is hard. The color palettes also differ as well, and the quality and the manufacturer quality of each pencil brand. So, again, we're looking, there are things that I say pro and con. 
I always look at, this is something that you have to consider when you're buying a set. Think of the packaging, the packaging quality, what is your needs. Do you need something that takes minimal amount of space? Do you need something that isn't as long and quite um, short and deep? Or do you want something that is not too large, not too small? Or you need something compact like the Luminance, which is just small as you can get box sets at the moment. And then you could also think about the colour palette. What is your preference of artwork and what colour palette suits you the most? Then you've got to also think about the quality of the product and things like do you need to be able to get a white if you run out of white or black? And if you are a person who uses white or black a lot and you need to restock, is this a brand that allows you to restock? Holbein's? No. It's not so easy to get because um, it's imported from Japan and it's really hard to get the product as it is rather than getting it single penciled. So you're going to get, it's going to be harder if you're going to go for a set that you want to restock. Taran Dash, you can get that in open stock. Prismacolors, you can. And you can get that in the Faber-Castells as well. You got to talk about what is your preference of pencil? Are you into a soft pencil? Or are you into a harder pencil? You got to look at the mixtures of the wax and oil. The wax and oil is what makes them hard or soft. Wax, hybrid. Caran d'Ache, hybrid. Faber-Castell, oil. Luminances, hybrid. Pablo's, I'm pretty sure that's a hybrid too, but it's more of a oil-based pencil because it's so hard. Um, you can definitely tell the harder pencils are made of oil, majority. The softer pencils are made of wax. Um, and what differs between each brand is their company's ratio between wax and oil and their formula. You've got to also think about pigmentation, butteriness as well, and how it blends. These all blend quite well. This one, this one smudges very easily. And it blends nicely because it is made of wax. But in terms of colours blending seamlessly compared to others, you will notice with these, you start to see the, gradi the, the gradation between colouring isn't as smooth. And I have to show you what I mean by this through one of my examples. Alright, see the blue, that spottiness, that's caused by the pencil. It could also be a combination of the paper as well, but that effect only applies to certain colours in the Prismacolor set. Not all of them, um, just in certain products. Let's find another example to show you. That red in the chair, you can see that spottiness, and that's caused by the pencil as well. These were done in Prismacolor, all of these. This was also done in Prismacolor. You can tell in the skirt too. And it could be because of what the, what the pencils are made of, they're having that spottiness. But all in all, you get what you paid for. And it's still a great set. Now, I know I have a Faber-Castell example in here. Hmm. The Holbein's. You don't experience that spottiness in the whole binds at all. It actually blends really nicely. There is no graininess in the pigmentation when it's laid down. So that's the uh, whole bind set. Yeah. Let's see. 
the Faber Castell also doesn't have that. Oh no, it does. The Faber Castells also have that, but it could also be a blending issue as well. You know, what I'm gonna say end of the day is basically all these sets are really beautiful. They all have their pros and cons. If you had to pick point, if you had to, you know, be picky. But they're all really amazing pencils. And at the end of the day, it's the product that's amazing, not just the box that holds them. So, what I honestly say for you to do is get samples of every set if you want to try them out. Try it out, find out which one you want to try, and have a go. If you love it, get the set that you want. Who cares what everyone says? Who cares if people hate it or like it? Don't let people rain in your parade. You know? Because the last thing I want to do is put down a certain brand because of certain issues when other people love it. I love all these brands. I think they're all great. They have their pros and cons, like I said. But I still love them. And I still make them all work. And you know what? When you know the pros and cons of every brand, you just learn to love it. You learn to deal with it and you learn to make it work. And I learned to make each and every brand of pencils work. Even though they're all really different characteristics and you have to understand and learn how to handle each of them differently. But, you know, that's just, that's just the trick of the trade, I guess. But I'm just saying, like, these pencils are all really lovely, guys. Some are hard to get, some are easy to get. Some are more readily available, some are expensive, some aren't. And some have some manufacturing flaws where some don't. It's about weighing up your options, weighing up your budget, and your preferences. So, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. And I will respond to you as quickly as I can. But no, I'm not throwing shade or hate at these brands. I love all of them. There are always there are always things for us to improve on and thus those brands. There are always things that they can improve on for us to make sure that we have great art supplies. And I think companies would love to hear our feedback. Um, and they would love to hear my feedback on certain things. But all in all, the products are great in itself. It's about the pencil, not the box. But the box is pretty good. Um, so as I said, this video is more targeted to those who want to take a step up and get your collector's box. But you don't know what collector's box to get. Um, unfortunately, the Prismacolors don't have a collector's box. But I would love to purchase one uh, when they ever release that. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed. Have any questions, comment below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!